What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's lots of news to go over this week. First off is the baby Bronco was leaked out, kind of. This was from that uh, Ford dealer conference in Vegas that went on last month. Uh, and these pictures are thanks to offroad.com that claims they came from a Ford media site, um, but no one else has been able to find them. So they're either removed quickly, but they don't look like official media pictures to me. They almost look like someone in the back just taking cell phone pictures, but um, that's their claim, so whatever. But anyway, uh, we know it's the baby Bronco and not the full-size Bronco, mostly because of that middle image there where you can see in the background um, you know, a shadow outline of where, you know, but a more boxy, larger Bronco would be, and it even has like a little cutout there for like a spare tire in the shadow there. And so... Clearly, this smaller one is supposed to be kind of like a Jeep Renegade competitor, although this does look a little bit larger and longer than that. But it seems to be a similar type thing. There's rumors this could be based on an Escape. There's also rumors it could be based even on the Ford Focus Active, which we don't get here in the States, the next-gen Focus. So we're going to get the Active uh, the active version. It was supposed to come here, but then because of the tariffs, um, since it was built in China, we no longer are getting it. Um, but this we're definitely, of course, getting. And I love the looks, by the way. The retro looks at the you know circular headlamps. And it looks like that Ford emblem might actually be illuminated as well. It should be a cool little touch. But just, you know, it seems to be really funky and really cool looking. And that all, I'm, I'm hoping that's the production version. It almost looks like too much like a concept vehicle that I'm really hoping the production version actually looks that cool because it does look very cool. Um, now, as far as names for this, they we do know that Ford has trademarked Maverick and Timberline. Um, so it could be one or the other, could be both. Maybe Timberline is like the trim, almost like a trail boss or, you know, things like that. The, uh, you know, uh, track hawk and trail hawks that Jeep has. Maybe Timberline is the Ford version of that. So maybe it'd be the Ford Maverick Timberline, you know, for the uh, more off-road version or something. Who knows? But uh, anyway, Way, it's most likely we'll be seeing the Bronco and probably also the baby Bronco sometime next year. There was rumors the Bronco could show up at the Detroit Auto Show in January, although that may be a little soon. We'll have to wait and see, but anyway, interesting to see that. A vehicle that's going to be showing up in about two weeks here at the LA Auto Show um, that leaked out uh, a little early here is the 2020 Jeep Gladiator, which is the official name for the truck that we previously were calling the Scrambler. That was what we thought the name was going to be, but Gladiator turns out to be the final name here. So these pictures were discovered on an FCA media site um, by a poster on the JeepGladiatorForum.com. Um, and uh, so uh, you can see uh, it's uh, basically a Wrangler with a <laughs> bed on the back of it, but that's good. I, I mean, people love the Wrangler styling, and that's what everyone wanted was a Wrangler pickup, and so here you go. So there's also some specs here on, including, in this uh, you know media site supposedly that also leaked out before they were taken down um, they include that it's going to get this the uh, standard 3.6 liter v6 as the standard engine for the truck as well uh, you can get it with either the eight speed auto or the six speed manual just like the, the wrangler which is awesome you can get a manual in this truck um, and it's also going to be able to get you'll be able to get the optional three liter eco diesel v6 as well which they didn't show numbers for in this leak spec sheet um, but in the grand cherokee it does 240 horsepower and 400 20 pound feet of torque so we'll have to see what it ends up doing probably will be the same here in the uh, gladiator but we'll have to see uh, they also quoted in this uh, leak spec sheet um, a max towing of 7600 pounds most likely for that diesel version and also a payload of 1600 pounds and uh, it's going to be available with two different four-wheel drive systems as well as uh, dana, dana 44 axles electronic sway bar disconnects and 33 inch tires so, I mean, it's going to be just as good off-road as the Wrangler. So that's awesome. It's not just looks. It actually has the, the chops to match. Um, and so they're saying it's going to be available uh, either with the soft top, the convertible soft top too, just like the Wrangler, which is awesome. So a manual convertible truck, uh, you're not going to get that anywhere else. You can also get uh, two different types of hard tops as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's only going to be crew cab because that's all we see here pictured or if there will also be a single cab. But, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It does seem like there's only the one bed though, a five foot bed. So unlike other trucks where sometimes you can get a longer bed, um, doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do that at least uh, from the get go here in the Gladiator. It uh, also has a fold down windshield even just like the Wrangler, which is awesome. So yeah, but we'll see all the official uh, pictures and details here in the next couple of weeks. But anyway, cool to see that little uh, preview beforehand. 
Kia, by the way, there's lots of uh, manufacturers that are showing teasers for the LA Auto Show. First off here, Kia has shown uh, a teaser for the 2020 Soul, which um, you know has this cool C-pillar treatment and that large vertical tail light you can see. Um, and so we do know this is going to be coming at the LA Auto Show. And uh, Kia actually did confirm as well that um, all the current versions of the Soul will translate to the new version. So that means we'll get a new turbo version and a new EV version as well, since those are currently offered for the soul um, but we'll have more info on that in two weeks hyundai has also shown a little teaser here of just the badge for their new three-row suv which is officially obviously called the palisade and that name was trademarked last year i think or early this year so we kind of knew that was probably going to be the name um, but anyway hyundai will be showing that in la and they say it's going to be available next summer uh, genesis has also shown a teaser for the 2020 g90 now this one probably won't be shown at the la auto show this uh Teaser seems like it's uh, just for the South Korean market uh, because they, in the press release they showed on the social media sites uh, for Genesis, they said that um, it's going to be available in South Korea in June, um, but no, no info on when we'll get it in the States. And uh, you can see it's just a refresh. It's not the all new version of the G90, but does look like it's a radically different front end there, you know, with very large um, LED headlamps that are very different and a little bit of a blockier uh, grill and hood and stuff. Uh, but, you know, it can't tell too much with the cover on it but anyway cool to see that teaser Toyota has also teased an all-wheel drive Prius that they're going to be showing most likely at the Ali Auto Show, although they didn't specify that, but that's uh, clearly what they're uh, going to be going for as far as auto shows. And they also um, had a tagline here. They said, fall is here, winter is near, but the 2019 Prius performs on roads, whether snowy or clear. So um, yeah, a little little rhyme there and so uh yeah we'll have to wait and see what type of all-wheel drive system it uses um whether it's just like an electric thing um for uh those rear wheels or if it maybe uh, borrows some of subaru's techs and subaru's borrowing some of toyota's tech for their cross track hybrid which i'll get to here in a second um but anyway yeah we'll probably hear more at the la auto show uh, Aston Martin has shown some teaser images here of a vehicle they're not showing at LA, um, but it's their SUV that's officially uh, been confirmed to be called the DBX. And so um, they showed all these pictures though, and it's only got a camo wrap, so we can tell a lot of the details already. Uh, and so we can see, you know, the front end clearly is heavily inspired by the Vantage, um, but it has uh, typical boxy SUV proportions, you know, similar to like a Levante or something like that from Maserati. Um, and so that means it won't be a lifted hatchback because originally the DBX concept was just like a DB9 that was lifted or something. So this is definitely going to be a full on uh, SUV. Back end, we can't tell too much there since it appears to have some dummy taillights uh, just for testing, but we can see what looks like two different little spoilers, one on the roof and then one integrated into the hatch area there, a little lower down. Um, and uh, they were testing it on a rally stage. Um, so they're very serious about making sure this is going to be a good off-road performer. Um, but uh, they said it's going to be fully revealed towards the end of next year. So we have a long wait before we see uh, the full reveal of this. But like I said, we can get a pretty good idea from these pictures. I'm sure we'll see many more pictures of this driving around here and testing over the next, uh, you know, 12 months or so. Um, Another teaser going back to LA is Honda has teased the 2019 Passport, um, which we were hearing rumors that that would return, and it's been confirmed by Honda. They're bringing the Passport back from the 90s there, and so it's going to be revealed in LA, and they're saying it's going to be positioned in between the CRV and Pilot, and Honda says the new Passport is a more personal powerful and off-road capable SUV that hits the sweet spot between daily driving comfort and weekend off-road all-weather adventure capability. Um, they also say it was developed in America and will be built in America and Alabama at their factory there and it'll be on sale early next year. So they're they're beating Ford to the punch uh, with the Bronco, you know, the, the Passport will show up here sooner and, um, you know, a lot of the other competitors, everyone's rushing to come out with these truck-based SUVs uh, considering the, uh, the huge successes of G uh, products and so um, pretty awesome though I mean we, from what we can tell there we just have that one picture of the back end it almost looks like a pilot in the back we'll have to see again how this styling ends up panning out in a couple of weeks but anyway cool to see those teasers
And we have a couple of Subaru stories this week. Uh, so the first here comes from Subaru of South Africa. So they actually developed this Diamond Edition WRX STI um, that's been modified uh, by, I mean, this is an actual OEM Subaru uh, you know, subsidiary, uh, but they modified it to do 349 horsepower and 342 pound-feet of torque. They didn't get too detailed, but I'm guessing there's some type of new tune, maybe some stronger internals, I don't know. But I mean, clearly these cars are capable of this with just a tune, so maybe it's just that. Anyway, it also has those STI lower lip parts uh, painted to match the brake calipers and that yellowy green color. Um, and anyway, this was made to celebrate 30 years of STI, something they just decided to do on their own. Um, and so they're only making 30 of them. <laughs> so very, very rare and only for South Africa, of course. So um, yeah, but anyway, cool to see, uh, you know, this is actually technically the highest uh, horsepower WRX STI ever built, uh, you know, at least from an OEM. So cool to see that. Uh, there's an iffy report from uh, this publication in Japan called Spider 7 um, that claims that Subaru is working on a new small hatchback to compete in the World Rally Championship uh, because they want to get back into rallying. Um, and apparently the current WRX is too big to uh, enter in. It's just it's out of the, the uh, size class uh, for WRC, so they can't uh, use the WRX and STI. So they're going to do a smaller, new, different hatchback supposedly so this would not be a hatchback version of the WRX or WRX STI it would be a completely different smaller hatchback vehicle and because of that the chances of if this is a real thing the chances of it coming to the states uh, are pretty slim I think you know uh, oftentimes you know, there's a lot of quirky little super models that stay only in Japan and maybe some of them come to Europe and so maybe they'll do that for the WRC stuff but Coming to the states, uh, highly unlikely considering just how you know small uh, hatchbacks, in particular, and even small sedans aren't selling well. So having a performance one, I mean, maybe they'd toss Subaru enthusiasts a bone, but uh, I feel like everyone's happy with WRXs and their large uh, American of Americanized uh, you know sizes and stuff. So uh, you know they probably wouldn't bother bringing this over, but we'll have to wait and see. And that is assuming this is even a real vehicle that is actually happening. This is just from this publication. Um, but anyway. Interesting to hear that nonetheless. Also, uh, Subaru uh, had a media event here the past couple of days for the 2019 Subaru Crosstrek Plug-In Hybrid, which is official, and they revealed it to journalists who were taking pictures and posting them, um, but Subaru didn't officially put out a press release or any official photos yet of the Crosstrek for public consumption. So I'm guessing they're showing at the LA Auto Show. I can't show you any pictures, unfortunately, because I was not at the event. Uh, Subaru doesn't really show me any love, unfortunately, uh, but so I don't have any pictures to show you guys, um, but you can go check out uh, my colleague Redline Reviews was at the launch and several other publications um, and so I retweeted a couple of those on my Twitter Matt Moran uh, if you want to see those but uh, we'll have all the details on it here at the LA Auto Show I'm assuming in about two weeks so it's been rumored to have about 25 miles of EV range all EV range um, and uh, yeah so we'll have to wait for more details but anyway that's coming so um, keep your ears uh, open for that uh, Hyundai has uh, revealed pricing for the Veloster N this week and and man, it is competitive pricing. So it starts at only, including destination, $27,785. It's actually under 27 if you don't include destination. Um, and that's for the 250 horsepower version with 18 inch wheels. The performance package uh, option is $2,100 more and that gets you the full 275 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque. Um, so, but even with that $2,100 option package, you're still under $30,000, including destination, right under $29,885. But that's really a bargain. Um, that gives you the yeah the full horsepower there. It also gives you a variable valve exhaust system, electronically controlled a limit slip differential, bigger brakes with 13.6 inch front rotors and 12.4 inch rear rotors, uh, plus uh, 19 inch wheels with Pirelli P0 summer tires. So the only downfall of this performance package is you get worse tires in my opinion, with the Pirellis versus supposedly it's been reported that the regular 250 horsepower version of Loster N gets Michelin uh, Pilot Sport 4S tires on 18 inch wheels. So you go down an inch in, in uh, tire si or in wheel size, but you get the better tires, I'm guessing, you know, because they offer the Michelins on the even of the Voster Turbo. So why the highest performing N version doesn't get the good Michelins and instead you have the uh, junkier Pirellis, I'm um, not sure. 
but uh, that I'm hoping maybe a dealer could just swap tires or or something like that or you know if nothing else I mean just doing a tire swap isn't a big deal and still considering how affordable and uh, how good of a deal this is if you have to buy tires it's not the end of the world um, but I mean, yeah, the pricing, I mean, that puts it, even uh, with that performance package, it puts you right around pricing of a base GTI after destination and stuff. Um, and I mean, it undercuts so much stuff. I mean, yes, you know, a Civic Type R is 30 extra horsepower, but this is five grand cheaper, actually six grand now since the 2019 Type R went up a thousand bucks. So now it's 6,000 cheaper than a Type R. Very, very good as far as pricing goes, I think. And I think they'll sell a lot of these. There seems to be a lot of hype. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to review when I, I was invited to the hunt Hyundai uh, media launch for the Veloster Turbo, but not the N. Um, so um, guessing I'll have to probably wait till the spring since they all have summer tires on them in order to properly review it as it, we're starting to get freezing rain outside now. So not going to be able to do anything too sporty here over the next few months. But um, anyway, so cool to hear about the pricing. Though. That's phenomenal. Uh, we have a few BMW stories this week. First, BMW has shared details on the 2020 uh, M340i uh, sedan. And so it's going to be available with either rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But there are, of course, only 8-speed automatic. You know, that was made uh, headlines a few uh, weeks back that there's no manual for the 3 Series anymore here in the States. Now, in Europe, you can get it in the base engine, and that's it. Anyway, for this M340i version here in the States, 3-liter turbo inline 6, 382 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. 0 to 60 is only 4.2 seconds, which is crazy fast for a non-M3 3 Series. Uh, also gets an electronic limited slip differential standard here for the uh, M version. Uh, and also larger brakes with four piston calipers in the front and an optional variable damping suspension as well. Also, like all three series for this new generation has perfect 50-50 weight distribution, wider track, stiffer chassis, and lighter body. Um, and anyway, these are going to be arriving in dealerships in July. So uh, just in time for summer next year. Uh, another uh, three series that they gave us some info on here is the new 330E plug-in hybrid. So uh, the main feature for this that they're uh, excited about is this extra boost that they're calling it with an X uh, when you're in sport mode. And that can give you up to two. 293 horsepower as long as the battery has charge so it'll pull from that uh, battery pack um, which is 12 kilowatt hours in size and in normal mode, it uses that two-liter turbo four-cylinder engine um, that does 184 horsepower on its own, plus you get 68 horsepower from an electric uh, motor for a combined output of 252 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque, and that's all running through an eight-speed automatic. Thankfully, they're still sticking with a, a normal automatic, not a CVT like half these other hybrids, which is great news. Uh, six seconds, zero to 62 time, too, for these, this hybrid one, so it's, it's not really slow. Uh, the pure EV driving range, BMW says, is 50% better now at 37 miles of EV range. Uh, it speeds up to 68 miles per hour. Uh, they also are claiming 10% better fuel economy, uh, but they didn't release ratings yet. Um, so it should be you know, a nice improvement there. Uh, it's going to be available in all the same trims as the regular 3 Series, including the, the M Sport version with its more aggressive styling and stuff, which is cool. Um, and anyway, these are going to also be arriving next summer right alongside that M340i. Uh, the last a little bit of BMW news here is they also teased the 2020 M8 um, and it mentions that it's going to have north of 600 horsepower and there's going to be a competition version eventually that they kind of hinted could potentially get 650 horsepower. Now it uses that same uh, twin turbo V8 from the M5. It seems like a lot of the stuff from the M5 is uh, carrying over here to the M8. So it's going to have all wheel drive with a rear wheel drive mode, which is awesome. Um, it's going to use the same eight speed automatic and electronically controlled M8. Uh, rear differential there. Uh, the chassis and body structure will be stiffer than a regular 8 series as well, they're claiming. Um, but we still have a long wait for this to fully be revealed. I mean, we basically see what it looks like. There's no secrets here, really. But it's not going to be on sale, I think, until sometime probably late next year or early of 2020, because they're saying it's not even going to be fully revealed until September 2019 at the Frankfurt Auto Show. So, uh, still have about 10 months to wait on that one. But in the meantime, the M850i is still very sweet as well, and those will be available a lot sooner. And if you follow me on Instagram at Matt Moran Motoring, you'll know that just at the end of last week, as uh, I was posting last week's weekly update, Mazda revealed the 2019 CX-5 with its new turbo engine, um, which is awesome. Mazda, they really seem to listen to their fans, and uh, this is a prime example of that. Everyone wanted the turbo motor in the CX-5 from the CX-9, 
and they just swapped it on over and did a lot of other nice improvements as well. So um, you can now get that 2.5 liter turbo engine in the highest two trims, which are both new here. Um, and that does raise the price of the CX-5. A fully loaded CX-5 was previously like 31 grand. That's jumped up a lot. That is one thing. Um, and so if you want to get uh, a CX-5 with this turbo engine, the cheapest one you'll be able to get is the Grand Touring Reserve trim now, which is $35,865. Uh, but it also includes, I mean, it's it's pretty well fully loaded. You still get heated and cooled leather seats, heated steering wheel, leather interior, all that type of stuff. Um, but there's also a new top of the line signature trim, uh, and that uh, is you know something that was very successful in the CX-9, so that's why they did it for the CX-5 as well. That gives you dark brown leather seats, real wood trim, a 360 view camera, frameless rear view mirror, LED interior lighting, and dark 19 inch wheels. Uh, and those ones uh, tally up in the, like the mid 37,000 range. So definitely getting a little pricier, but I feel like the Mazda interiors are really luxury interiors in a lot of ways. So I can uh, totally see that being justified, especially considering the uh, the power you get here. You know, it has the 250 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque with that turbo motor. If you run 93, I think it's like 225 horsepower if you run uh, like 91 or 87 or something. Or I think, yeah, I think regular 87, I think 91, um, it's somewhere in between. But anyway, 93 is how you get those peak numbers. But I mean, 310 pound feet of torque. I mean, that thing should scoot. I'm excited to uh, get one to review, hopefully fairly soon, because Moz is saying these are going to be available in the next couple of weeks, actually. They said this fall, and fall is rapidly ending uh, in the next couple of weeks here. So hopefully it'll be uh, available to review here very soon. Um, a couple, one other thing here is that also all CX-5s uh, get a retuned suspension, uh, so it should have a smoother ride, better handling. They also improved the uh, G-Vectoring control system, so now it's G-Vectoring Control Plus, they're calling it, um, and so that'll help with a kind of a torque vectoring type of sensation that's just brake based, but still great to see on, you know, a family crossover. And, um, yeah, so really exciting to to see that. It's gonna, I'm just, it's gonna be awesome. A really a, a great substitute for those who are sad about the Forester XT departing. Now you have this. And by the way, that turbo motor only comes with all-wheel drive. You can still get front-wheel drive on the uh, regular engine, you know, slower versions in the lower trim levels. But for that uh, Grand Touring Reserve and Signature trims, only all-wheel drive. So you don't have to worry about only having front-wheel drive or something. All-wheel drive with the turbo motor. Um, yeah, it's uh, Subaru is just giving up sales to Mazda. So Mazda is capitalizing on it. That's great. Um, other Mazda news here is that the all new Mazda 3 hatch was spied um, with only a camo wrap on it here. Thanks to spy photographer Brian Williams for supplying these shots. And so it uh, looks like it's going to be pretty attractive inside and out in typical Mazda fashion. Uh, it'll be fully revealed at the auto show. Um, and uh, that's another one that, you know, they've been showing a couple of teasers, but didn't reveal much. Um, but Mazda has confirmed that it'll debut with the two liter Skyactive X engine, um, which has that amazing uh, spark controlled compression ignition system, very similar to like a diesel type ignition system, but it has much lower emissions. And Automotive News Europe uh, continued on beyond just the Mazda teaser. And they're reporting that it's also going to be getting a mild hybrid setup to go with that engine. And that'll help to smooth out the power delivery as well. Because I think there might be a little bit of a rough edge with maybe like very, very low RPMs in that engine. I'm not sure. Have not driven it. A few others have driven a prototype out there. But um, but yeah, so I think they're going to do the mild hybrid to kind of smooth out the power delivery. Make it, you know, just as predictable as a normal engine would be. Um, they also claim that you will be able to get the new Mazda 3 with this current uh, two and a half liter four cylinder naturally aspirated engine if you uh, don't want to take a chance on the new technology. You won't be forced into it. That will be an upmarket option for that mild hybrid Skyactiv-X uh, combo. Uh, the cheaper ones will just still get the standard 2.5 liter uh, engine you currently have. So that's good. You know, give people the, the choice. So if you want something that's been proven and, you know, not quite as risky, that's cool. But I mean, I, I think this this other engine, it sounds impressive. They're saying it's going to have similar performance to that 2.5 liter uh, four-cylinder, but it's going to have the fuel economy of a 1.5 liter diesel is what they're saying. I mean, we're talking massive jumps in fuel economy. I think they there was reports or rumors that the fuel economy could be as good as 40% better. And the Mazda 3 already was very easily returning, you know, high 20s in daily driving. So you go 40% better than that. I mean, you're talking some really, really impressive. If you do a mild hybrid combined with that, I mean, we could be talking about fuel economy into the 
you know, forties or fifties. We'll have to see. But anyway, uh, yeah, very, very impressive. And, uh, so we'll hear more in the next couple of weeks. Um, last week we had, uh, the, some a couple of spy shots sent in by a viewer of the Audi S7. This week we have some spy photos here of the RS7. Now this has uh, some camo on it, but it's just a wrap so we can still see pretty clearly how it looks. And it's typical Audi fashion where it's a, a little bit more aggressive, but still pretty subdued considering how much power it'll most likely have. You know, the previous one was over 600. This will probably maybe even be a little bit more than that. We'll have to see. But anyway, uh, cool to see that spy. Some other Audi news, uh, is a report here from both Auto Express and Auto Build that are saying um, they're claiming that the next gen Audi TT uh, is going to get a four door version. But it's not just getting that added on to it. It's supposedly, according to their report, they're killing off the two-door coupe and the roadster versions of the TT. So the TT will essentially just be melted into another sedan and the countless amount of Audis they already have. They already have the A5 Sportback and S5 Sportback. And I'm guessing they're going to try and, I guess, make the TT cheaper and smaller than that. Um, but the TT always seemed like a little bit more expensive. So um, there's talk in these reports about it being like a Mercedes CLA competitor. So that would mean you'd be able to get get this new TT sedan hypothetically in the mid 30,000 range whenever, you know, usually you can't get a TT for less than what, 45 or something. Uh, so we'll have to see, you know, if they're going to try and just downplay it a little bit and, you know, make it a little cheaper. And, um, I mean, I guess it makes sense. They don't have a proper CLA competitor. They just have the A3 and everyone else has coupier versions now, you know, and so, We'll have to see. That would be a real shame, though, because it would mean there wouldn't be any kind of affordable uh, coupe, you know, sporty coupe, or any kind of affordable roadster uh, for Germany or anywhere. And, uh, you know, it's just if you want a roadster Audi, you have to go up to an R8 now, which would be a bummer. Um, so we'll have to see, because I think in Germany, the TT still sells pretty well. So I think it could even be a bigger blow there than it is here. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. I mean, you know, I know small uh, sports vehicles and stuff don't sell very well. And Audi's chasing numbers, I guess. I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Speaking of the CLA, though, uh, the next gen version was spied again, um, and uh, it just we continue to see more and more, you know, little by little. Looks see, definitely a little sleeker than the regular A class, which we'll also be getting. Um, and uh, this is a little pointier there in the nose and in the rear, and should be look like a baby CLS, I think, is what they're going to be trying to go for with this. Um, and it'll probably be revealed sometime early next year, but cool to see that. Uh, Mercedes uh, was also spied testing the E class both in sedan and coupe versions. First, you can see the coupe uh, is a little bit sportier looking. It has uh, what looks like similar to CLS uh, headlights there in the front, a little more pointed and aggressive, and a front bumper it's a little more uh, aggressive than it has been in the past. And the taillights just seem to have a slight revision, and that seems to be about it as far as the changes. It doesn't seem like there's anything new to the sides or the back. The sedan version uh, seems to have a, a less aggressive headlight there, but again, it's kind of similar to the CLS. And the bumper seems a little flatter, not quite as extreme. But the real mystery on the E-Class sedan is the back end there where it has dummy taillight units. You can't tell at all what the taillights are going to look like. So there could be some pretty heavy changes to that if they're, um, you know, not not even putting camo over production taillights or they just haven't finished them one or the other. Um, but yeah, so anyway, cool to uh, see those spied and those refreshes should be coming, I'm guessing, sometime next year. Um, although it doesn't seem like the E-Class is very old already. So they're just, I guess, keeping them fresh. And so that's awesome. Tesla has made a couple of changes to the Model S and Model X here um, for kind of like a new model year. Just, you know, it seems like every uh, so often they update them with some new stuff. Um, so it's it's a change to the options and the pricing. First, um, the base prices have gone up again. They continue to creep up as they discontinue the, the smaller battery packs and stuff. So now, you know, the cheapest 75D versions are $1,000 more than they were previously. Um, that's probably partially because they're trying to bundle things for better value. So you now get the premium black and interior as standard and previously that was an option to pay more for so I guess they're giving you more again if you didn't just want a base model um, the cream and white interiors have gone from being $3,300 options to $1,500 options now. Um, so that's nice as well if you want to go for one of those. And they did lower the price of the 100D models of the S and X uh, by $500, bucks, which is a nice um, little change there. Um, some other changes, though, uh, that might not be so nice depending on what you want. Um, that rear-facing third row that was pretty cool in the Model S, uh, that's no longer available at all. Uh, so you're going to have to go to the used market now if you want one of those. Um, and you can't get 
get the panoramic sunroof anymore on the Model S, which means that supposedly that was required in order to have a roof rack mounted. So technically with the new Model S's now, if you were or to order a new one, you would not be able to put a roof rack on it. So again, that's something if you're interested in, you'd have to go to the used market or just get an X or something. Um, and uh, the last thing is with the X, you can't get a rear center console anymore in the six seat configuration. Um, you can still get, a, of course, still the regular six seat configuration, which just has a pass through in the middle and the seven seat configuration as well. And the last two stories this week are from General Motors. The first is that they announced they're discontinuing uh, the Cadillac CT6 plug-in hybrid version. Um, so of course the regular CT6 is getting a refresh next year and stuff. And they said with that refresh, they won't be uh, including the plug-in hybrid version in that. And and so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a shame, uh, but it seems like not too many people are really buying them. And also, those ones were built in China, and so with those new tariffs, that makes it much more expensive. Uh, and so I'm sure it just wasn't profitable to bring it over anyway, despite sales, but especially with the sales, just not worth fighting for, I guess. And so it is being killed off. Um, and then the last news here is Chevy is adding two new packages to the Colorado for 2019. Uh, the first is this RST package, only have one picture of here, um, but you can see it gets the grill from the ZR2 Bison. Um, and basically this is based on an LT model with blacked out trim uh, wheels and then you get that grill. And that's basically it for the RST version. No type of performance improvements. There also is a trail runner package you can now get uh, and it's based on a Z71 trimmed Colorado. Um, and it adds uh, skid plates from the ZR2 for the front axle and the oil pan. You also get Goodyear all-terrain tires and side rock uh, rails there. Uh, plus you get that new grill again from the bison and so um, you know just a little bit more a slightly more off-road friendly package there for the Z71 which is already a little more off-roader friendly than a regular Colorado but not quite as um, full tilt as the ZR2 and um, but yeah cool to see uh, just Chevrolet just giving people options uh, always welcome but yeah so that's it for all the news this week guys I did also cover uh, in person the all new 2020 Toyota Corolla and did a separate video on that while I was at the reveal and and, uh, so you can go watch that if you missed that, by the way. But yeah, otherwise, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.